Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today we're looking at a major new update for the Exodose Windows emulator on Android. If you don't know what this is, Exodose is a powerful emulator that lets you run both Linux and Windows environments directly on your phone. That means you can install Windows software, test out PC games, and even try Linux tools, all inside one app. And now, the developers have released version 5.9.0, which comes with a ton of new features and improvements. Before we get into the step-by-step -step setup, let's quickly go over what's new in this update. The update brings refinement in five key areas. First, UI and user experience has been polished. Second, there are big performance improvements. Third, compatibility is better than ever. Fourth, graphics and gaming support has taken a leap forward. Finally, a bunch of bug fixes and stability updates have been added. Now let's walk through the setup process so you can get this running on your own device. The good thing is that you only need one app, Exodose. When you open it for the first time, accept the notifications, give it storage access, and the app will begin installing its system files. The base app is around 1.5 6G GUI, but after installation, the system files expand to about 9 GB. Don't panic if the emulator closes after this. That's normal. Just reopen it and you'll be on the home page. On the home screen, you'll see three options. Preferences, Start, and Exit. Begin with Preferences because this is where you'll fine-tune the emulator. In the Output option, set your screen resolution. For most devices, 1280 by 720 works best, but if you're on a lower-end device, 800 by 600 is a safer choice. Scroll down and enable Hide Display Cutout if your phone has a notch. Next, go to the keyboard option and turn off the setting called Show Additional Keyboard. This makes typing more stable. Then in other options, turn on the floating ball menu. This feature is extremely useful because it lets you access settings in real time while the emulator is running. Now move to the controller option where you can enable on-screen controls, similar to what you'd find in WinLater or GameHub. Finally, check the wine settings. If you're using a Snapdragon device, apply the recommended configuration shown on screen. If you're on a MediaTek or Mali device, use the alternative setup. Leave every everything else as default and back out to the main menu. When you click Start, you'll see a desktop environment with a lot of icons. These include Exodus, Prout, Kali, WineGlipk, WineBionic, Xbox, Termux, and more. To begin, click on the main Exodos icon. A pop-up will appear asking you to choose a driver. If you're on Snapdragon, choose the Turnip driver. If you're using MediaTek, Mali, or other GPUs, select Vulkan. After that, you'll be asked to choose a rendering mode. CPU mode is the most stable, hardware mode is faster, and Vergl is used for for Linux apps. Pick the one that works best for your device and the emulator will launch. That's it. Zodos is up and running. The first thing I like to do is change the wallpaper. It's a small touch, but Zodos includes some cool wallpapers that make the desktop look a lot more vibrant. Another big feature is the floating button we enabled earlier. This lets you change settings on the fly while the emulator is running. So, if something isn't working, you don't need to exit and restart. You can just tweak the settings live until you find what works best. Exodus also comes with built-in emulators like PS1 and Xbox. I haven't tested them all yet, but they're there and ready if you want to try. Another highlight is the built-in app store. It's neatly organized into categories like all apps, accessories, development, games, graphics, internet, multimedia, office, and productivity. To test it, I went into the internet section and tried installing Chrome. After a few minutes of installing, Chrome didn't launch, so that attempt failed. Then I tried Brave Browser, and this time it worked perfectly. I also pushed things further by trying out a gaming site with GTA 4. The game did load and ran with playable FPS. PS, which was impressive for an emulator like this, but while it technically worked, the experience wasn't smooth or stable enough for me to recommend Exodus as a primary solution for gaming. For now, it's far better suited for running Windows apps, productivity tools, and browsing than for heavy PC gaming. I also tested the Linux environment. On my device, when I selected Linux without root, the screen just went black and nothing happened. However, in the developer's demonstration with root enabled, Linux worked fine. They were even able to run MS Word, PowerPoint, and other desktop software, so results may vary depending on your hardware and whether you're rooted. That wraps up the overview of the new Zodos 5.9.0 major update. If you want me to test specific apps, games, or Linux setups inside this emulator, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.